this way, I'm getting an emotion behind it. I said, at least she's going to make an emotion to the bank and take it versus holding it out. I think I asked the way because you gave us some kind of on the phone. Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring it to the close to this. Yeah, but it wasn't really accident. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I won't need to. Well, I probably will. Well, he was going to end up in the tournament. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for this important, coming to this important meeting of the Economic Development Authority. Um, Mr. Moore, will you call the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Hines? Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Present. Ms. Link? Ms. Revel? Present. Mr. Scott, present, and Mr. Thompson, Governor Corn. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Before the commissioners, uh, we sent out in the packet the uh, minutes of the April 17, uh, 2018 meeting of the Economic Development Authority. I trust that you've all had an opportunity to review these minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Mr. Hines? Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Stain, I was not here. Uh, Ms. Revel? Yes. Good read. And Mr. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Oh, she cares. Thank you. All right. Um, it's time for a presentation of our April financials. So I turn it over to Ms. Blackford. Thank you. Uh, on, on the yeah. uh, Before we go there, in terms of the minutes that we just approved, the minutes from the March meeting, uh, I think those need to be reapproved because the commissioner who made the motion, she was not even in attendance at that meeting because that was also the meeting where we had to make the correction that she was absent. That's, that is correct. Um, yeah, so we need, Mr. Miller? I believe we would need to, to do another motion on those minutes. I, mean, I, I see no harm in it if it would make the board more comfortable to go ahead. And do that. Yeah, because she pointed out herself that she was not at that meeting, and we had to make the correction and take her from being present. So uh, I would recommend we take another motion on the March minutes, on, on the February minutes. Do we need to amend the agenda uh, for the March minutes? Uh, you do it all in one motion, I think, maybe amend the agenda and approve the minutes. Ms. Jiggets, would you like to make that motion? I'll make that motion to amend the agenda so that we can take the vote on the February minutes. Uh, that would be the March minutes? The March meeting. Because these are the March me minutes we just approved. Actually, we just approved the April 17th um, minutes. That's right, that's right. So, so this is the motion is to amend the agenda so that we can take a new motion on the March minutes. And you're talking about the meeting of March the 20th? Yes. Okay. So we do have a motion to, appro uh, to approve to approve the March twentieth. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to order, Chair. I, I've, I've been in a lot of meetings. Yes, Commissioner Scott. Mm -hmm. I I think it's uh, it's your fault, Aaron. You started it, but I don't believe, and I'm positive that you're not testifying or voting on the minutes are accurate, and you eyewitness the minutes, and that you had to be there. You're voting that the people that you that were in the room after you reviewed the minutes that you believe in the veracity of the, of, the, of those minutes as they as they were presented. It doesn't matter if you were present or not present. You can vote on them. You can move to to have them approved after you reviewed them. That's, that's the issue. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be there when they were taken. You don't have to be there. Uh, only you don't have to be there to vote for them after you've reviewed them. That's Robert's Rules of Order. Now, if we're doing something different, then I'd like to know. But I don't believe we need to be doing this. And so for that reason, I, I'll abstain. Uh, the, the, the chairman would like to request legal's opinion on this, and then I will make a ruling. Well, I, mean, I think on the overall issue, I, I don't think it's a fatal flaw that, that Ms. Link made the motion. Um, there was a vote after it, and the, the majority vote approves the minutes. So I don't think the motion's a fatal flaw. So I don't think it's technically necessary, uh, but it, but it's not harmful either if you choose to proceed that way. To Mr. Scott's further uh, position as well as you know, in, in the case of here, I have no idea whether these are factual or not if I wasn't in attendance. So I abstain mm -hmm. from them. That's why I do that because I can't support I it too. and I can't deny it because I wasn't there. So right. I mean, is that a problem to? Vote absent on a set of minutes that I, I think it is. was not present for. Commissioner Ruffle. 
I think the issue is not voting on the limits themselves, but the fact that Tracy can make a motion to approve them even though she wasn't there. That's I think that's the issue. I understand abstaining if you were not there exactly. on the actual vote. Mm -hmm. But she's just making a motion that the people in this room can vote on approval of the minutes. Okay. So I understand Mr. Scott's point. Okay, I understand uh, Commissioner Scott's point, but here's the thing. If you're going to make a motion for minutes to be accepted, that motion should be made because you are of the opinion that you have found nothing within those minutes that you take opposition to, including the fact that you have been present at the meeting that the minutes do reflect. Now, that's, that's, that's my position. We're, Madam Vice Mayor, <laughs> in, in all of your experiences, will you please right. share? I can only share with you what, what we do in the city council meetings. Please do. Which, again, is supposed to follow Robert's Rules of Order. The, the, the act of putting a motion on the table for a vote is just literally that, to put the item up for discussion. You can't have discussion on an item until you make the motion to approve or deny. So, as far as I'm concerned, attorney could bring out Robert Jules orders, but when I make a motion to accept or deny um, any item, even if it's just minutes, it, it's not necessarily a statement of my conviction on the item, but a way to, to stimulate discussion on the topic. Okay. Therefore, whether somebody was there or not, I, I, who cares? It's just, it, it's the vote that matters. On based on the advice of legal counsel, the chair is going to um, note your concern. Please do, because I don't and, want to but, see a set precedent. But also, uh, do not believe uh, that we need to take a vote on the March meeting minutes again. All right. Um, Mac to Miss Blackford with the financials. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As at um, April 30th, total net position was $13,664,258.52. Total revenues for April was $10,575.63. Total expenditures were $14,706.67. This resulted in a net loss of $4,131.04. Total expenses for development properties were $4,250. Cash and temporary investment balance was $1,826,315.90. Rents available to be awarded remained at $235,244.13. The um, total, there was a pool cash settlement of $56,368.07. Therefore, the ending pool cash balance was $14,666.67. Now, we did not get a um, BBNT escrow statement in time for reporting. So, for the April's interest on the BBNT account, that will be reflected in the May's financial statement. And that's the end of the report. Mr. Kelly, do you have anything as treasurer that you'd like to add or have any questions? Yeah, well, I would like to have enough for discussion among some other commissioners. Some, of the, some, little, some points were brought up uh, to me as well. I do have a question, though. On those uh, brokered CDs, what is our total right now, the balance? Um, that balance stands at, and this is at the end of um, March because we did not get um, a, an April statement. That balance stands at $1,005,597.40. Okay. All right. Um, the question um, that Aaron is posing is something that uh, caught my attention. Uh, note one, and that is uh, we referenced the total amount of purchase CDs being a million six thousand, with one hundred and ninety-four dollars and eighty-nine cents remaining uh, in the assured account, and I, I, I just could not reconcile how you arrived at uh, those amounts because it doesn't prove back to the million five thousand 
$597.45. What, what, what page are you on, uh, Commissioner? That's on the that's, first um, page. That's the balance one. sheet note. Gotcha. Note one. Gotcha. So that was the um, the original amount that was placed in um, the CD account. I got it. And then, um, as I explained at last right. meeting, uh, because of the type of investment that the, um, the CDs were purchased for, those will fluctuate with the market price. And then at the end of maturity, you will see the full reflection of the principal and the interest. And that is what I was told. So you will see, th so um, if you look at the note, that was the original amount that was placed into the account. But that $1,597,000 uh, $1, that reflects the changes and the fluctuation in the market price as it stands right now. So it's, it's, it's going to be different from the amount that is originally invested. <coughs> so let me have this over here. You said a million. Me, I still have the oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, please come from yeah. Thank you. Um, I think it is something that we need to discuss further. However, the total five CDs that was placed, you indicated we placed the million six thousand in the CDs. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And we actually, before we placed the million six thousand in the CDs, are you saying we actually had a million six thousand one hundred ninety-four dollars and eighty-nine cents altogether? That's correct. Yes. And so at this point, you're saying we actually lost interest on the money? That's correct, yes. Because of the, um, the type of CDs were the um, um, FDIC brokered CDs, and that does reflect changes in um, market prices. So those will fluctuate, as I um, explained last meeting, until the end of the maturity, which is one year from when we purchased the CD. And that is when it will reflect the, the principal and as well as the interest. The interest is estimated to be around um, 20000 which is what you projected. Um, Treasury. Okay. Um, on page two for operating expenses under the account 559022 for the economic business development expenses, we have budgeted 2000 And I notice uh, that we're over budget as of year to date today. And for March, we had indicated $1,218.41. However, when you go to the pool cash reconciliation page as a part of the $56,368.07, we indicate $2,318.41 for business development in March. So, okay, so um, for the um, pool cash, it's a quarterly um, reimbursement type. So those, like, those are like all of the expenses for the quarter, not necessarily for the month of March, because we do it in a, on a quarterly basis. OK, so even though you referenced that it is for March for the $2,318.41 for the business development economic that, development account, you're saying that that is not for the month of okay, March? OK, that is a, um, the, the pool cash reimbursement is a quarterly event. And so um, because I was asked to um, put the um, details of the pool cash on the statement once we do that, that is why it's on the March, <coughs> or um, this is the April statement. So that is why it's on the April statement. But just note that the, um, all of those expenses are for the quarter. So it's not for just one month because we do the pool cash reimbursement on a quarterly basis. But they're reconciled monthly. I'm sorry? Yeah, they're, they're reconciled monthly. The pool cash, the pool correct, cash is reconciled be, monthly. Right, correct, and I yes. think that's really what Ms. Jiggetts is, is right. focusing on. I don't think she's worried so much about the transfer of funds to the city. I think she's just that's more right. looking at the actual monthly that pool amount. cash amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because, because we are over budget. and. For the business development, we don't normally see it be, being over budget. Now, true, in other accounts, we're under budget. Correct. So yes. in, the, in the scheme of things, yeah, overall, this is good. But right. it, it jumped out because of the, the March expense that you indicated was 1,218.41. And commissioners, please recognize 
we are in the month of April, but it, it jumped out because when we go down to the pool cash on page eight for the business development, uh, which shows 56,36807, $56, but then we indicate for the March for business development, that is 2003-1841. So I think it's something that we can certainly get together on. Uh, I think, to I think Ms. Black has explained our methodology, which is to yeah. do that on a quarterly basis, and that is a customary and acceptable thing, I think, here. So if the rest of the commissioners are comfortable with that, that's what we would offer is appropriate for your financial statement preparation. Well, let me re just respond so, for so a second. Let me just make sure. So this is that 23-18-41 is a quarterly number. Transaction. So it doesn't show up in March because it hasn't occurred yet. Correct. It would show up in April when right. the quarter has been Because the financial quarter. statements are essentially That's right. a month behind. That's right. Even though it's referenced it's March. But let me d let me say two things. First. See, Commissioner Scott also has a comment. So yeah, no, I was going to. She, 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 she. If she, she, you yeah. just wrap this up. Go ahead and yeah. do um, first of all, we appreciate that we're now getting the pool cash reconciliation, and we were encouraged that that, well, that's, that's what we will expect going forward. Um, but just not to belabor that, but this is something that jumped out. Um, and I have to regress now to page three for the development property for 409 McLean Street. Uh, we're not showing an acquisition amount for that land at all. And so maybe Jeff can speak to that once Commissioner Scott has said what he had to say. And then the other thing was there was on page two, on the, under other expenses, there was $40 indicated from page two, but I don't see where that is accounted for under pool cash reconciliation on page eight. So okay, those so are those are my observations. There are a lot of observations there. I just wanted to give Ms. Blackford an opportunity to explain those. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the uh, okay, so the forty dollars that was for the um, the wire fee that was used to um, send the pool cash settlement to the city. That $40 comes directly out of the um, account. Okay. So it's not, um, it's not going to re be reflected in pool cash reimbursement because there's no need for reimbursement since it's already came out directly out of the account. So it's not something that the city paid on behalf of EDA, but it was um, taken directly from the EDA's um, account. So it will not show in your pool cash. Let's account. get that reversed too, because we don't get charged wire transfer fees from the bank. So anytime we see them, we just need to contact them and let them know. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, is what that makes that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. So you're saying the bank will not charge us for the wire? Well, that's not a yeah. Well, they will not if we contact them. Yes, they shouldn't do so it. So they if we should get them, yeah, reverse it. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. What she, and I understand exactly what she's saying is, is that's not actually an amount that was transferred to the city, therefore it wouldn't show up on the pooled cash that's side. That's correct, yeah. Make, it yeah. Comes so the reflection the is proper. Came right out of the cash side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then we should look to get $40 back. Correct. With back a phone call, we will ask. ask. You might even phone call and, and, and we if can the request 120, it. If the 120 is the same, you might, gonna say. you might, as long as those are all the same thing, which probably are. <laughs> You know, on a staff side, you need our treasurer to send that request to um, you, and then um, you can make that request to the bank for the wire fee. How, how do you want the mechanics of that to work? I just with a 40. The way it'll work is once the signature cards are done, like right now, me as sitting as treasurer, I could go down there right now and just okay. have to do it. <coughs> it's not a problem. Okay. <coughs> the signature cards get done. I think there's a change of officers today. So if that takes place, then new signature cards will get done for the bank. Next month. And it's next, next month. Next month. Yes. Okay. This is a nominating committee today. Okay. So I can go down there today and okay. get them reversed. Sounds and great. Let, let me just be clear on on the steps you're going to take uh, for us, Treasurer. Yes. Uh, if you would uh, ask them for an accounting so that any and all wire fees we've been paying that they would be reversed. You'd see them right here. Yeah. I mean. Oh, no, there wasn't any of the years prior because there weren't. No, okay. we, every now and then, I think, and I, I can't speak for anybody who had it happen, but my guess is, is if you go to a different person to have the transfer done, the person who has sitting at the desk doesn't know any different, 
that's how that happens. But mm -hmm. well, it's just those who sense. know know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's one of those things that we do. We have pointed out from time to time, and including years past. So okay. I don't think that's the case. I think that what you're seeing right here is what you're seeing for. Okay. Well, every little bit counts. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Scott has been patiently waiting. Commissioner Jiggins, may I have a floor, please? Hold on. <laughs> I had, I had, um, the chair, the chair gives you the floor. No, <laughs> oh, no, I got to her. No, um, I just want—I know it's, this is nothing to do with y'all. I guess historically, since I'm still still learning, I'm trying to understand how are we in a market that's gone up almost 20 percent each year over the last three years, four years. How are we losing money on the CD? I mean, I don't understand that. Well, um, Can you explain what? How? Who's picking and choosing each? <laughs> Um, so Black, um, Ms. Blackford. Yes. Um, based on okay, so I that was my first question to um, BBNT. Um, why is it because you know with typical CDs your principal stay intact and then you get interest right. added on. Um, so I spoke with um, uh, I was referred to a gentleman um, in uh, BBNT and he explained to me that the, because of the type of CD that we have invested in those are just kind of how the you know it works with the market it's going to fluctuate and then uh, at the end of the maturity period is when you're going to see your true reflection of um, interest so um, and original that, principal balance correct? right and the original principal. so basically what you're seeing right now is you're just seeing a market value fluctuate which I'm not used to seeing in a CD either right, so I exactly. understand where they're coming yes. from yeah. so but what you're saying is this particular one is based upon marketable security so they're going to fluctuate but regardless the time this thing comes to maturity at the end of 12 months you're going to get your principal balance in yes. full and the set agreed upon interest return that, that which we is agreed estimated to, to be um, around 20,000 yes. for the, for one year yep. so on a million dollars yes it's a, who, who's I, I guess so I don't need to know all the mechanics I just want to know who's making the decision to invest money that foolishly in a market like this that's um, what I want to know point of order man speak I, I, I didn't actually, get the uh, uh, point of, wait a minute. Treasury. Stop. Stop. It's, One second. Okay. Point, of, point of order has been called. Okay. It's undebatable. So we need to listen to the point of order. But it's only about the actual order. You can't jump over top of him if he's trying to make a question. So is it a actual point of order of how we're asking that, or are you just going to wait your turn after Mr. Scott makes his presentation? Or his question. I'll wait. I'll wait my turn. Mr. Scott. So, so I just want to know. Please don't be who, so accusational. Let, 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 let me just ask again. How how did we decide? Can we find out? We don't need to know today. But if we could, I love to know how this came to be. How we had a million dollars sitting someplace and we decided to put it somewhere in a market that's going up. If you count, I don't know how long it's been there. You know, that's what I like to know. How long has it been there, and what kind of percentages? Because the market. I mean, if you just had it in an index fund, we'd be doing great. So I don't understand how we how we in a position where we're reflecting a loss today and that's some locked in guarantee down the road. I just like to know what kind of document what that is. If we could, not today, maybe at the next meeting, if that's okay. At the chair with the chair's permission maybe? I I, I have no issues whatsoever, but I'm, I imagine the treasurer maybe can bring back a report or may even know the answer to that. My daughter picks um, not better than that. I can tell you the how it got to where it was because we were all there during our retreat, but I, I can't tell you exactly the particulars on which particular CDs they went into. I know that when we were, when I had dialogue with Ms. Bickford, we actually sat down, we had, we were given rates of return on different CDs. There was never indicated there was a market fluctuating or one backed by marketable securities. It was just a CD. So it does, it raises a question for me too. But if the actual documents are basically saying that if, if the market drops and they still have to pay us our original principal plus interest, the bank eats that. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing those. Yeah, as well. I just want to know. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, I think it would not be bad for information for the commission or that information to be returned back. Um, is that uh, obtainable for you? Um, yes, part. I will reach out and um, get as much information as possible, and um, I, we can um, I can converse with Mr. Kelly on that and um, get back to the board. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve these financials. Right now, we have some small, minute things we want to point out, maybe take a look at, but nothing's material enough to hold this up from getting approved. So, Jiggis, uh, we can get together, put down all the things you have questions about. We'll draft it up and send it over to you guys. So there's, there's really nothing in here that's a material that's going to 
Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Hines. Yes. Mr. Jiggets. Stain. Mr. Kelly. Yes. Ms. Link. Yes. Ms. Revel. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Um, let's move on to our old business. <laughs> And uh, uh, the uh, local incentives uh, program update, I believe we had a presentation at our last meeting uh, regarding a potential um, addition to our local incentives plan, Mr. Moore. Uh, if you want like, to kick off this discussion, I think it would be a good opportunity for us to kind of get a finger on the pulse of the commissioners since we've had a month to um, digest that presentation. Certainly. Um Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, wanted to take the opportunity, as certainly as we get closer to the new fiscal year, certainly the budgets have been approved uh, for this body. Um, and with the changes that were proposed at said uh, retreat uh, to the LIP program, we as staff are, are working to put together the new uh, information uh, that you all have requested. Um, and what we need is um, some more clarification, uh, more specifically on the uh, boundaries, the new boundaries of this of this LIP program. Um, certainly, we added areas, but we need boundaries as well as from a standpoint of the. Uh, for example, the facade improvement program and facade improvement grant, um, the signage pr uh, portion of that, need some clarification on um, how that will work. So when we uh, update the applications, we can do so accordingly. Um, so. And, and I, I'll just kick it off, I believe, and I, and I just want to make sure I captured this because we did talk about this in our pre-EDA meeting was that we all kind of agreed to the Churchland area zip codes mm -hmm. and a signage piece of the signage provision up to $2,500 that can be part of a actually larger application. Naturally, I'm going to turn this over kind of discussion to our ad hoc committee, but I believe that was what we all kind of agreed to in the retreat and in the subsequent meeting thereafter. Yeah. Please correct me if Tell I'm wrong. Tell me exactly what you need, Mr. Moore, because I don't have the information in front of me that no I submitted at the time of the retreat. No so problem. I so depend on my memory. And, and correct me if I'm wrong at any time. Um, certainly we added the Churchland area yes. to the, to the, um, the program. We need clarification on that. Is the only pro the only area that's going to start July one? No, that's not correct. Again, so just making sure that we are correct. Um, Want to make sure that we know any other boundaries, what those boundaries are. Right. Uh, we need to specifically know from a street standpoint because when we create the maps necessary to indicate, and we have GIS indicate on maps where those are, we need to make sure we have those set correctly, uh, as well. Um, that's, that, I'll say that for the boundaries. Um, from a standpoint of the program itself, um, again, we want to be clear on any changes to the amounts, because um, I know there was a discussion of changes to potentially amounts, but more specifically for us, the facade improvement grant um, and the signage aspect, we know that the amount was um, up to $2,500. Um, we want to be clear the, the facade improvement grant is a, it's, it's one time up to $25,000. So again, if they don't use $25,000 now, they still have the opportunity to come back. So from a signage standpoint, you have the same situation. If someone spends $2,500 now, essentially they could come back 10 times for a sign. So I just want to be clear that that is the case before we put this together. I don't believe we can resolve this at this meeting because we don't, I don't have my notes. I, actually, what I was going to suggest is yep. why don't the three of us get together yes, with our notes sometime between now and the next meeting, and then we can actually come back and say this is what we have. That so, and, and I'll be glad to do that. Uh, that was going to be my right exact recommendation. Okay, Please. but let me respond because I do remember some of the discussion. And in terms of the area, it's not just the Churchill area. It is the Cavalier Manor Quarter over by Victory Boulevard. 
uh, is included, and that, that is in your document. And so once you pull your document, you will see that. So I don't want us to get fixed on thinking it was just the church well, area. What, what we are going to do, what Tracy and I are going to do is pull our notes together and meet with Robert yeah. uh, sometime between now and the next meeting so that we can we can be accurate about what we're saying. I don't want to. And, and actually, if I can just also add, the, mm -hmm. just go back through, um, I believe the retreat is actually on okay. video as well. Please yes. review yeah. that. Um, that is where we, we all kind of came to a consensus yes. of the program going forward mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Um, I look forward to, to that piece of information coming okay. back to the, to and the group at the June yeah. meetings. <laughs> as long as you keep Cavalier Manor yeah. in there, because I don't want to see something not in there that was inclusive. Well, of we're, we're going we're going to go with what was passed at the meeting, and that was part of what was passed. And I want to be clear and firm on it. What was that? Staff will work with the, the committee okay, to I'm clearly that. state what those items are. Uh, we will be prepared in June to bring that back. Um, again, we will go by the guidelines that were placed um, and discussed. I know there were several layers there. We will work through those yeah, layers. And, layers. And to respect the amount of work that you have to Certainly. do between now and July 1st, we, we will schedule this meeting as soon as possible yeah. so Thank you. you can begin work. Thank you. Thank you. Then there was, I believe, also one other item with regarding the local incentives program as well was a, there was some discussion at our last meeting regarding not to muddy this water, so maybe we need to have this as a separate item of the ad hoc was a discussion about flood barriers in the downtown area. Um, maybe we can come back and add that to an agenda at a later date. Um, yes. But I know that we talked about that, and uh, for anybody who did not see that presentation, yeah, that was uh, it was a, it was very yeah. useful and helpful information, mm -hmm. and anything we can be, do to be pro business in our downtown area will probably be most helpful to the health, the health of our city. So, so staff will work with um, the committee as well. Okay. Um, that again may be a separate meeting just because there may be some additional sure. information that we need sure. to obtain, uh, but we will uh, report back at least to yeah. where we are findings wise in June. And likely not a you know right. an item that needs to be incorporated in this revision, Certainly. but maybe in, in a future revision. Certainly. Okay. I do have to do um, ask a question because it's getting a little muddy again, but we had actually already approved what was supposed to take place in terms of what Tracy and Kathy presented to us. We actually voted on. Yeah, and, and I think okay. I think staff is just asking yeah, for just, just some additional okay. clarification. As as yeah. They're not asking us to change anything. No. They just want, okay. they have questions about what we did yeah. pass. Exactly. Okay. So that's right. what we're going to yeah. go back Certain, and clarify. Certain yeah. language was already it worked in it. and things mm -hmm. of that nature. They just want to grab the appropriate Certain. language that, at this point. So. Certain. Okay. All right. Um, Next item of available business is the EDA uh, property update. I'll turn it over to Mr. Moore. Certainly, thank you. Um, what staff is looking forward to doing uh, going forward is making sure that we update um, the commission or the authority on um, happenings with their property. Um, I think historically what has happened is um, you all have approved something and then guess what, there's a ribbon cutting. Uh, we want to make sure that we are including you um, in the process, making you aware of where we are. So for this update, where we are with the uh, former Churchland Library, uh, we are, as, as of yesterday, I think, and Mr. Miller can, can jump in, we are anywhere from 10 to 15 days from closing on that property. Um, um, I think all the, the, the kind of behind the scenes paperwork, everything has been done, site plans have been approved, so we are very close to closing um, on that property. Um, as well, we are moving forward with uh, certainly 710 Lincoln, which was the, the Feather and Finn property. Um, they are, again, in the midst of putting in their uh, site plan and going through that site plan approval process. Um, with that being a super fun site, there's certainly some, some extra steps that are needed there. Um, but again, this is our attempt to, to make sure that you all are in the loop going forward with, our, with these properties. Um, I will say, as I stated at the last meeting, um, you all have eight properties. At the last meeting, we stated that seven properties, um, again, two of them we will talk about in closed session again today, um, seven of those properties are either um, pending closing uh, under some type of contract or uh, pending some type of project that we will bring to you. I am happy to report that as of today, all eight properties are under some type of um, closing 
project or prospect. Um, certain ones you will have um, at your next meeting as we flush out those those um, those opportunities. Uh, but I think that's a first for the EDA to have all the properties at one time um, um, ready to go and, and, and under some type of um, activity. Uh, certainly, you all requested that um, DeVaris be here this month. Um, they could not be here because they are preparing for ICSC uh, in, um, on the West Coast. Uh, so they could not be here this month. We will have them here for June. Um, but I'll be happy to report that that report will be the same, um, all activity. Yeah, and I think just, I think I believe I made that request. I think what I just wanted to say, I think they were here last month as well. I think really all I want to know is what their outreach is mm -hmm. at this point. And mm -hmm. it could be a simple document that just says, you know, they've reached out to X number of prospects, that type of thing. And they're, they're working on that as we speak. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's I think that's too. just good information for, for the commissioner so we can have some oversight. No problem. Madam Vice Mayor. I don't know who's doing this great work, but I'll give Mr. Moore all the credit. Since 2004, I've never heard a report like that. Neither have I. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. And I, I know we'll chime in and agree, but I do have to say for the 409 McLean Street, uh, Jeff, if you would partner uh, with Lisa for a value to show on our financials going forward because we don't we're not showing anything for acquisition that? for 409 McLean and it should be on our financials. Sure, I, I will uh, get with Lisa on that. I think that. it was originally acquired from the city. Yeah, which, um, and, so and, and, no. and then the, with the church one, we have to sort of keep it. Just, just recall that's that's not ours, if I'm not mistaken. That, that, is not, the, that was a city-owned property yeah, that, that is the EDA still in the city's coffers. So. Yeah, the EDA helped with. But still, with great work, mm -hmm. Robert. Absolutely. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, that's wonderful news. Thank you for the update. No problem. All right. And uh, we'll move to the next item of our old business, which is our nominating committee for officers. Uh, our, um, our group, Mr. Commissioners Revel and Scott, were our <coughs> ad hoc committee for that. And uh, I'd like to maybe. Uh, Open it up for a report on your work. A short report. Um, Commissioner Revel and I uh, met. We uh, vetted uh, the candidates. We spoke to the uh, of certain folks, and our report is that we are recommending a slate to be voted on at the next meeting of uh, Chairman uh, Commissioner Revel, um, Vice Chairman Commissioner Kelly, Treasurer Commissioner Jiggins. That is a slate that we would like to uh, place for on the board. Sounds wonderful. Over, uh, I guess uh, we will vote on this in our June meeting, our reorganization meeting. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. And um, thank you all for your work. I'm sure that was um, quite exhaustive to be able to, to vet out our candidates. Uh, we've got a number of very qualified candidates. And, and thank you for, uh, you know, for doing that for, for our group. I appreciate the fact that you didn't put me up for that position again because it was definitely uh, a lot of uh, a lot of missed meetings at work that it, it caused a great deal of uh, stress personally for that. So thank y'all for doing that. Um, our um, next item is a piece of new business, and I uh, will turn that over to Mr. Moore. Uh, certainly, thank you, Chairman. The we wanted to again as we keep with um, you know kind of a. A, a new direction in economic development. Certainly the EDA has discussed um, having uh, joint meetings um, with their kind of development partners, PPIC being one of them. So we would like to go ahead and kind of get in motion or put in motion um, a time for a joint uh, PPIC and EDA meeting. I think we'd like to have this twice a year. Uh, I'm thinking something like a July and a December um, I think December is what we did last year. Uh, it was a lighter time. July technically is a lighter time um, uh, from an agenda standpoint because both bodies would have um, their annual meetings in June. Again, July being a, a lighter meeting. Um, but we want to make sure this is something that continues, um, as certainly as we work together and talk about collaboration um, and communication between the bodies. Any uh concerns from commissioners regarding that potential schedule? 
I know uh, December tends to be tricky towards yeah, the end of December. just because a lot of travels with family and stuff like that, and we're not exactly the first of the month. So I don't know what November looks like, but yeah, if you're doing it twice a year, I like the idea of twice a year, and it is a, they are a strategic partner to work with. <laughs> maybe January instead of December. Well, I will say this: we are looking at um, certainly having um, in December more of a, of a business appreciation uh, type of event. Um, certainly, it is your purview if you if you wish to um, forego a meeting to attend that event. We are planning to have an, an evening event, a holiday open house in um, in December. Um, at, at the Economic Development Office. So um, certainly you have the opportunity to, to eat and fellowship and discuss with your fellow commissioners there. Um, that too will be in December, probably the first part of December, first week maybe. Um, so it won't impact too much on individuals' holidays. Uh, but we have time. Um, I think certainly July, um, if at all possible, we'd like to go ahead and get some con some consensus for July. Um, so we can mark it and, and, and promote that as necessary with the other group. Um, and he, yeah, I, I search for a consensus for a July meeting uh, via a shared meeting. Mr. Revel? Yeah. Jacobs? That's, that July can be tricky, too, because it, people it, begin to take vacations and everything. It, it can be. Uh, I think what we're so, kind of um, looking for is allow staff to, to talk with the PPIC to, you know, to, to kind of vet it out and let us know about June. Because yeah. actually, didn't we do one with them last year in September, or am I? We did one in, in December, and I thought it was very very successful. I thought it, we, we, we talked a lot. Maybe we did the city of, council one in September. Somebody we did in September. Yeah, we, I believe we did do. Uh, we were there for a while doing them. Yeah. So <laughs> we were having every quite month. It seemed <laughs> like there with city council for a little bit, but yeah, uh, so. I just want we were good for July for staff to explore that. Yes. Yes. Okay. You got a consensus. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, that moves us to our next item, uh, Commissioner comments. And uh, I'm actually going to let uh, Mr. Moore go first because I think he has some some news he'd like to share with us real quickly. Certainly. Um, Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. I don't know if you all were able to attend uh, about a week ago. Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce had their Small Business of the Year awards. Uh, each locality, uh, from an economic development standpoint, certainly uh, recognizes and um, um, nominates several businesses for that award um, and then the uh, certainly the, the public as well as um, some judges uh, make that decision. For our locality, Simis Incorporated uh, won for Portsmouth Business of the Year and I'm also proud to announce that um, Simis also won for the overall Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce Small Business of the Year. Um, they, That's with the S, not a P. Yes, <laughs> yes not a P, not a P. Um, so uh, we are very excited for Dr. Garcia um, and his staff. Uh, they have grown from 25 individuals to 100 in the last 10 months. Uh, we certainly had a, a ribbon cutting for them uh, back in August, September of last year. Maybe. No, actually, not take that back. It was probably more September, October last year. Um, but very excited. They gave a, uh, a very nice shout out, if you will, to the city of Portsmouth and the support that we have given them. So we wanted to make sure that um, everyone knows about that. Um, so we're excited about that for them. Also, we have in front of you today, uh, certainly last month, we had the, um, the uh, thumb drives that contain this document, but this is the actual printed document for um, our, um, I like to call economic development update, I really don't like annual reports, but it's our update, that you know where we are um, from this standpoint. Um, and it was actually um, inside, inside business um, for that small business award um, edition. So again, we are excited. Uh, we haven't had a, a annual update or annual report of any type in several years, uh, but this was this will be an annual uh, situation that'll come out right around and be timed around um, the state of the city. So, this is very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This very is nice. very well done. Mr. Link, comment? Um, actually, yes. I am not going to talk about the chamber, but I am also the representative for Portsmouth on the Hampton Roads Association of Commercial Real Estate. And I had the privilege last beginning of this month to show up for a presentation by Robert 
and this is a very stuffy group when we meet you know we talk about there's developers talking about every project throughout Virginia Beach Norfolk Portsmouth Chesapeake um, and I have to just give a big shout out to Robert because he did such an exceptional job representing our city record explaining our vision in a way that I had not heard from you and I've watched you since you started um, and, and it was they were enthusiastic after he was done and excited to hear that there were great things going on in Portsmouth so good job Robert I was really I was impressed thank you very good thank you Mr. Scott I have nothing Ms. Rebel Mr. Jenkins um, uh, the only thing I would say is that keeping up about what's going on with the sales, certainly the SAIL sales, uh, certainly as we go forward with our successes, uh, there might be an opportunity for us to assist in anchoring the sales for downtown, the gateway for Portsmouth, for EDA to play a role in that, I would hope. That's my comment. Okay. Mr. Kelly? Yeah, no, I love it. I love hearing all the reports we had today. One thing I would consider, too, on the website I, I was on there looking at the other day, under the enterprise zone and the hub zones, it'd be nice to be able to see a geographic footprint. And I, I, cause I was trying myself to find uh, some folks that I know, see if they fit the mold, and I could not find the maps anywhere. So so we are working to, to correlate that. That's another reason why we need the boundaries. Um, GIS is working on a specific uh, map for us. Um, certainly also will be under the property search tab as well as under the enterprise zone tab. Uh, we will also have under that uh, property search tab as we work through our <clears throat> tiering system for EDA properties, city owned properties, um, and properties owned by our partners like PRHA. Uh, we will also have there um, the opportunity to um, highlight a property, see what, what we consider it as um, tier wise, and then have all the information. So that's, we're about 45, 60 days away from that. So all of that will be encompassed, but we thought we could do that all at one time. Okay. And um, my one and only comment today is I was listening to the Supplemental Retirement Board, which really has nothing to do with EDA, but learned a piece of information that the city has hired a um, CFO. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to take the opportunity to thank Ms. Seward for her, her service to our city. Up one more time. I'm going to bring her, introduce you, introduce you all to her, and then I'll exit out. So. Well, thank you for for the coming in at this, this very important time in our city and during budget time and during budget time for the EDA and being so accessible to our commissioners for answering those questions and and for professionally stepping in and, and doing a, a great job. So thank, thank you very you. much. Appreciate that. All right, with that, I believe we do have a need for a closed meeting. Yes. And I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Kelly if you wouldn't mind reading us into closed <laughs> meetings. <laughs> okay. I, I will check with Robert because I Whereas the Virginia Freedom of Information Act right. provides that the Board of Commissioners will hold closed meetings for certain purposes set forth in paragraph 2.23711A, the Code of Virginia of 1950, as amended. And whereas in compliance with the requirements of the code, the topics to be discussed are set forth below. And the subparagraphs of paragraph 2.2 of 3711A, authorizing discussion of the topics in closed session are set forth in parentheses after each topic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners shall meet in closed meeting for the purpose of discussion, discussing disposition of publicly held, publicly held real property interests where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body, i.e. 700 Crawford Street, 409 McLean. All right. We have, been, have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Mr. Moore, do you have a second? Aaron. Yes. What was the closed meeting about? 700 Trawford. Oh, okay. Clean. All right. So, Mr. Hines? Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Mr. Keller? Yes. Ms. Link? Yes. Ms. Revel? Yes. And Mr. Scott? Yes. Motion carries. We're in closed session. Mr. Hines? Yes. Ms. Jiggets? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Link? Yes. Ms. Revel? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Motion carries. We're in open session. All right. Um, one last item. Uh, and I'd like to have things on the agenda before I bring them to you, but um, I just received this information after the start of this meeting. 
that um, Vice Chairman Thompson has um, resigned due to health and recovery issues effective May 15th as a commissioner on the Board of Economic Development. So um, just wanted to let the uh, body know that Mr. Thompson uh, has, um, uh, Vice Chairman Thompson will not be joining us uh, in, in any subsequent meetings thereafter. And I wish him well. I know he's had some challenges with his health. So um, oh, maybe drop him a, a line, to, you know, and, 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 and wish him well in terms of his health. And uh, if I'd like to just take a moment of privilege here is that I've uh, worked with, with uh, Vice Chairman Thompson uh, my whole time in this on the commission. And uh, he's been very helpful to me, and he was very knowledgeable uh, about economic development and did a lot of um, additional trainings um, and was very active into his health, um, these health issues. And uh, he used to be commended for his, uh, <coughs> his service to our, our city. And I wish him well. Well, great. Is there an opportunity to uh, send him an official letter? Uh, as a chairperson yeah, so and a certificate maybe for his time of service here on the EDA commission. You, can, can you arrange a, a letter thanking him for his service and that I would happily sign and um, maybe add that to the minutes for uh, a meeting for next uh, <coughs> meeting thanking him for his service. He he's, was an exceptional commissioner during his time. Um, with that, uh, We'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. I thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. <clears throat>